Hey, good morning, guys. Let's give it a moment before we begin. Give me a moment. Hey there, hey there. Hi guys. Hey, nice to see you guys here. Hey, thank you for joining, man. Hey, where are you guys from? You guys can hear me, right? Let me change it. Everyone can talk. Hey. Hello, nice. Hey, hi, Jock. Hey, nice to see you there. Hi, Saga. Hey, hi, hi. Where are you guys from? Hey, hey hi, uh, Nathaniel. Hi, hi. So let's give it a moment uh, while we let the others uh, join. So in case they don't miss out on all this good stuff that I'm presenting to today. Oh, nice, Germany. Yeah, I, I think I learned a bit of Germany like uh, Tis ein der Mann. Yeah, I'm the man in German. Tis ein der, der Mann. Yeah, something like that. Quite long ago. Oh, Nepo. Saga. Oh, nice, nice. Is there anyone from Singapore or Asia that are tuning in? Hey, nice. Greetings from Manila. Nice, nice. Philippines. Hi, Joyce. So, yeah. Greetings from uh, Rwanda. Nice, nice. Okay, we have each, each been I man. Ah, yes, yes. I think I... <laughs> My, my German is not that good. I used to learn the beats from Duolingo. So yeah. South Africa. Very nice, very nice. I'm from Singapore, by the way. I'm from Singapore. All right. So yeah. Today, okay, let's begin. I think we have waited a bit long enough. All right. Hey, welcome to another Ultimate Forex Trading Masterclass webinar from tick mail so yeah let me turn this let me roll it down so yeah this is the trading masterclass just disclaimer as usual this webinar is for information purposes only and should not be considered for investment advice so anything you see here just please do your own research too and you uh you can only afford to take the high risk of using your own money before you start trading. So yeah, today I'll be presenting on the trading trade management part four of four, trailing stop loss techniques. So yeah, there is, there is me right there. So back then I had a pretty messy haircut. So I had a nice cut already. So yeah, my name is Chen Yongjing. It's right here. So we are the finalists for the best Forex research for 2019, 2020, and 2021. So we are also the finalists for the best equity research for 2020 and 2021. So yeah, so we actually have a special collaboration with Tick Mill where we with that where we will be bringing you guys the good stuff. So yeah, what to expect in today's session? So we'll be learning, we will be having a recap on the anatomy of a trade. When do you use a trailing stop loss? So it's very, very useful when you do not have the time to sit at a well I do, but I will not be promoting my channel here. So yeah, yeah, that's a good one. How did you know about that? So yeah, uh, I did. I also will be presenting the different trailing stop loss techniques and the examples of trailing stop losses. So yeah, it's actually very, very good to use trailing stop losses. So it's being used when you have no time. You have not, not no time, not much time. So you have not much time, you decide to enter a trade, but you do not have time to monitor your trade. And then you open your trade already. Open trade. Plus, no time to monitor. That is when the trailing stop loss. It's very, very useful. Hey, hi there, Jamilu. Good day. Good day to you, man. 
Yeah. Nice, nice. So yeah, the anatomy of a trade. So the basics, we have your entry, your stop loss. I'm sure everyone uses a stop loss with a take profit target. So who uses a stop loss? Who uses a stop loss? There are some people who actually don't trade with a stop loss. Well, it's fine as long as they can manage their risk. Stop loss is risk management. They can manage their risk. Most people do set a stop loss, including me. So yeah, I, I actually risk only 1% of my account. So to take that in, so, in, so let's say a $1,000 account, I only risk $10 per trade. $10 risk per trade, and that is 1%. So yeah, we also have our break even, where we take partial profits and the trailing stop where we will be presenting today. Hey, hi, uh, Mar uh, Marina. Uh, Marina, do you have a question? I just saw you raise your hand. Feel free to type it out in the chat. I'll try my best to answer you. So next, we also have the idea in validation. Idea in validation is when you have already entered a trade. So you entered a buy. Stop loss, SL, enter a buy. But price decides to break. So this area, breaking of this area, we can call it the break of structure. Or we also can call it the idea invalidation level. So at the idea invalidation level, that is when you start to manage your trade by closing your trade out, taking a little bit of profit right here. Or setting break even for your trade to just hit your BE. So it's also very good to have idea in validation. I must stress it very, very hard. You must have an idea in validation. You cannot just let your trade run unmonitored. So if you are leaving your trade run unmonitored, maybe if you do not know how to use that, you can start to use the trailing stop, which I will be presenting in this webinar. So yeah, for a take profits and stop loss recap, Okay, let me get this out. Okay, so to manage your trade expectations. So you must have to, you have, you have to identify your entry, you have your take profits, your stop loss, everything identified. Everybody has their own methods for determining their directional bias, their time, their volatility expectations. Okay, ask, uh, you ask, will this webinar be published on YouTube? Yes, it should be published on YouTube, but it might take a while because the team might take some time before they will upload maybe a week later. So yeah, please do your fundamental, fundamental and technical analysis before you enter any trade. This is just a very, very quick, quick recap. So yeah, I missed out a letter and fundamental, I like to call it the fundamental Canon. So with your technical analysis in play, together with the fundamental, the fundamental shoots your shoots to your direction or the other way in a very, very strong manner. Okay, just moving on. Okay, your trailing stop loss. What is a trailing stop? It's a special type of trade order that moves relative to price fluctuations. So it's, in, it's designed to lock in profits early or limits your losses as the trade moves favorably. So this is for people who have no time to manage. No time to manage. You got no time to sit at your computer after you enter. Okay, auto so next, we also have the automatic trailing stop loss. It moves accordingly as price moves favorably. So favorably, what do I mean by price moving favorably? So example, with your price continuing going up in your direction, so you had a buy, your stop loss will be moving. So every time it moves up to this area, let's say it moves to here, your stop loss, your trailing stop loss will be set here automatically. So as it moves higher, it might be set here, continuing, continue, continuing. But just do take note that the trailing stop loss will not move if the price continues to come back down. So it will stick at this area. 
So let's say price comes back down, hits your trailing stop loss, you would have taken a pretty nice profit. You'll just move relative according to your price. So you also got the manual, tra uh, manual trailing stop loss. Manual trailing stop loss, it's based on your mechanical indicators. Indicators that you, there's those kind of, you can do a trend line. So you have a sell entry. You have a sell entry, price continue going up, bang, continues going. But when price goes back up to tap the trend line, this area can be your manual trailing stop loss where you close it out early and you have a pretty nice, pretty nice take profits. So that is a manual trailing stop loss instead of an automated stop a trailing stop loss. So yeah, Gary, you ask, what is your own trading time frame, time frame and how often do you monitor your positions? So yeah, for this week, specifically today, so actually this week I'm very, very busy. So last week I only opened one position, one single position and it was on Euro dollar and it hit take profit in about, I think an hour, only one trade I took last week. It was a roughly one to two point something risk to reward. Yeah, one is around 2% of my accounts and then I'm, I'm just done. I'm just playing it safe, just waiting for the right setup. My own trading time frame is usually on the five minutes. So when I enter, I will usually do top-down analysis, 15 minutes, five minutes, and then all the way down to one minute time frame just for the entry. But overall, when I'm looking, I see a, I take a step back. So I relax. This is how I am on my chair. So I'm just looking at the charts. Looking, looking. It's usually on the one hour or 15 minutes time frame. Just relaxing, waiting for the right setup. And I'm not always looking all the time. You know, trading view, there is a alert. There's an alert that you can use. So let me clear out this chart. Let me clear this out. So maybe I can start writing. So trading view, there's something called the alerts. So I, I think those free accounts, you ha haven't paid any money. There's a one free alert. One free alert on trading view. One free alert. This is for trading view. So normally I set a, an alert waiting for price to break a certain area. You know, everybody got their own methods. You are waiting for price to break this, break that, all kinds of areas. So I set a alert for that area. When price hit, there's a thing, there's a thing sound on my computer. I just walk over casually, just take a look whether the setup is right to enter. So what time frame do you use for intraday trading? Ah, yes, I just mentioned it's on usually on the one hour time frame. Usually on the one hour, just looking. But when I want to enter, it's usually on the 15 minutes, five minutes, and even the one minute chart. Can you explain the risk to reward ratio? So your risk to reward, I will, I will explain it to you later when I'm using trading view. Because right now, I don't think it's favorable to explain it just by drawing it out. So yeah, can you please tell us your favorite indicator for intraday trading? Ah, uh, yes, comes to this. I do, I do not use any indicator for trading. So later, if there is time, I'll show you guys how I trade without the use of any indicator. So I like to watch price action. I like to watch how the chart is moving. Without your use of any indicators, drawing out the charts, using my mouse, using my hand, I'm just drawing things out as price moves, no indicator. So yeah, let's carry on back to what to the, to the presentation. I think I, I might have gotten off track here. So yeah, we have a few examples of how we place an idea in validation level. Let me push it back, okay. A few idea in validation levels. So this is just a few examples, I'll get right into it. So first, let's say we have a sell entry. Our sell entry, we entered a sell, looking for price, price to head to the downside. So next, we have the moving average trailing stop loss with the sell entry in place. And then we enter the sell. We move away from our computer. We go and do something else. Go and have your lunch, have your dinner or whatever you might be busy doing. So price continues moving down, moving down, moving down but your trailing stop loss always stay the same. So as price goes down, the stop loss continues to go down too. But then price decides to reverse. Bam. 
your trailing stop loss was triggered, closing out your trade. So you would have a pretty nice, pretty nice take profit area. Your TP, you take profits at here. So that's your trailing stop loss. You can set it to, on MetaTrader, you can set it to plus 10 pips, plus 20 pips. It's up to you. On MetaTrader, there is a feature. You can search it on Google now. MetaTrader, on MetaTrader desktop, trailing stop loss. There's a setting for that. So yeah. So look what happened if we do not have a trailing stop loss. Without a trailing stop loss, price go take a look. Instead of closing, instead of closing right here, price continues continues to go up, and it would have potentially hit your break even, your B E level break even level. So yeah, it's actually very good to have your you have your trailing stop loss in play. Else, price hits your break even. Your entire analysis that you spend time and effort to sit down, draw everything up, and even wait for the trade to happen. In the end, hitting your break even, it, it might suck. It might feel, you might not feel okay, psychologically wise. It might affect you just because your trade went right, but you did not take profit. Hitting break even isn't the best, isn't the best of the trading days, right? So yeah, the trading stop loss price remains at a level that it was dragged to. So next, we also have the trend line trailing stop loss. Trend line trailing stop loss. Just a reminder, just a very, very quick recap right here. So when we have a trend line to have a very, very solid, so you want a very solid confluence trend line. So first on, we have at least three, at least three, three taps. What we want is three taps. So what we have, one tap, two tap, three tap. So if the three taps right here is a very, very strong confluence that we have that this is a valid trend line. Three taps, valid trend line. So we have a four taps right here. So this indicates it's a super solid, strong, valid trend line. So leaving price to run, leaving price to run with our sell entry in place right here. Price continues going down, going down, down, down. But we haven't closed it out. Once price hits to our trend line, so this is a manual trailing stop loss. So when price has a body close, body close, what I mean by body close, the candle body close above the trend line, we can immediately close out our trade. Close out our trade instead of just tapping. Instead of just tapping, you know, it might, all these are just reversals. It's just tapping onto a trend line, tap, go, tap, go. But once a body, body closes out of the trend line, many traders see that as a breakout trade. So it might potentially be in a case where in that, in that situation, Others might be drawing a triangle, some kind of triangle. Price breaks out of the triangle. They are looking to buy to the upside. So that is the reason why with a body close, it's a pretty strong indicator of a breakout or break of structure. So yeah, moving on to the parabolic SAR trailing stop loss. So this is actually an indicator on TradingView. You can search it out. Parabolic SAR. You can search it on Trading View. It should turn up as SAR. So yeah, it's like a moving average. It's moving same thing. Sell entry. Once price taps into that, your trailing stop loss gets hit. So these are just multiple, multiple ways of how you can make use of trailing stop loss. Helps you a lot with your trade, especially when you don't have time. So we also have another type of indicator, the Chandler and ATR trailing stop loss. Same thing, I'm just showing you some kind of, uh, some indicators that people use. So price, same thing, sell entry, price taps, same thing, you close out the trade with a body close. So another example, you can use the moving average, moving average as a trailing stop loss. So with your sell entry in place, okay, you might want to ignore this green line right here. Ignore it. So if your sell entry in place, your stop loss in place, 
price continues going down. But once we have a body close right here, above the moving average, it's time to close out your trade. So you can close out your trade right here. So closing out, you would have close right here on top since the body closed in that position. So you would have a pretty nice take profits area. So yeah, if were me, if it were me taking this trade, this sell entry, I would be closing at the bottom right here. Why am I closing at the bottom right here? This is the swing low. This is a swing low and also a pivot point where many traders use that points, a swing high, swing low to take profits. So in the other scenario, if it was along at the area right here, can be used as another area for taking partials or taking their full take profits position. So another example of the USD CAT support resistance. Okay, let me take a look. What is this with the cell entry, please? Okay, I think this is not that relevant. Okay, I'll get on to the I'll get on to the chart. I'll show you guys. Wait, give me a moment. I think okay, and let me get the charts right here. Okay, let me clear everything out. So yeah, maybe we have a okay idea in validation. I think I think before you while you are using the let me get things out moving, maybe moving average also can. I just now I show it also. Moving average. Should I use it? Ah, uh, wait. Ichimoku cloud. Remove that. So this is the parabolic uh, indicator that I was talking about earlier on. So yeah, you can take a look. Let's say if you are in a cell, just a very, very quick example. So let's say price broke structure right here. You look for retracement. You sold right. Wait, let me get it out. So let's say, let me find a nice area. So we have an area right here. Price cleared. Went up to clear that area. But then price came down to clear, to break the structure. So it came down, it broke the low. So you see zigzag, go up, and broke this area right here. So let's say we had a short, we had a short position, retracement, somewhere a retracement, short sell. Then you take prof your stop loss maybe at the previous swing high. So with stop loss at the previous swing high, so let me set the stop loss trade, stop loss. With that in place, price goes down, goes down. But once price taps and closes above the parabolic SAR indicator, you can choose to close out your trade at this area. So let me zoom in. So with that over here, the body closed above, you can close out your trade already. So let's take a look. Potentially you could have a, maybe, you know, okay, one to 1.55 risk to reward. That's not bad. That's not bad. One, that, that means your account is up 1.5%. So back to that question, somebody just now earlier, they asked how to do risk to reward. Who was that? Uh, Ria Lee. You asked, can you explain the risk to reward ratio? So your risk is the amount of pips that you are risking. And the reward is the take profit, the amount of pips you are looking to take profit. So in this specific scenario, in this specific scenario, Ria, we are risking... 41 pips for a 63 pip take profit. So you're on trading view, you can use the long or short, long or short tool. You can see the risk to reward is one to 1.55. So yeah, it's pretty good. Your account 1.5%. So if you're on a, I'll just put it, if you're if, if you in a thousand dollar account, your risk to reward 1.5. Let's round it up round it down 1.5%, you would have profited $15 profit. So it's not bad. 1.5%, please do not look down on a small percentage. 1.5% is still a lot. $15 is still a lot. 
if you put one thousand dollars in your bank right now and leave it to rot, you just let it you let it stay there one month, just let it wait. You will not be getting fifteen dollars. I assure you, no one will be giving you fifteen dollars if you just throw the thousand dollars into your bank. So you have already beaten. At this point, you have already beaten what the bank is able to give you. Even one point five per one point five percent a month is a lot. To put back into perspective, many so most of the traders that are brought and put into forex trading, you are taught to look for one to ten risk to reward, have a ten percent increase, ten percent return a month. Most forex traders are led to believe that a return of ten percent and above is to be expected. Just do take note that is a wrong way to trade. So how do I tax wrap? Okay, just read this. Most forex traders are led to believe their return of ten percent and above is to be expected. Just think. Just maybe I will just write it out in logically form in a logical form. So let's say you are just playing it safe. One point five percent a month, although it's fifteen dollars. So in one year. Let's pull it out one year slash twelve months. You would have okay three six times three eighteen percent. So am I right? Let me let me do a quick calculation, just in case I'm wrong. Should have eighteen percent right? Twelve times one point five. So yeah, you have eighteen percent return on a thousand dollar account in a year. So that would be one hundred and eighty dollars profit. But to take this into perspective, just mind you, look at your bank. How much are they giving you per year at the moment? Maybe one point five percent, maybe even two percent a year. Just think about it. I just put it right here. Bank. A bank is giving you, let's say, two percent a year. So on a thousand dollars savings. They give you only twenty dollars a year by just getting one point five percent, playing it very very safe. Even one point five percent a month, you have already beaten what the bank can even give you in the entire year. So I'm not sure why people are why those they are selling many gurus. They are selling you believes that you have to get ten percent and above, and they are asking you to risk. How much are they asking you to risk? So you look at you look at. A lot of forex gurus they ask you to, they tell you to risk. Tell you, FX gurus. I won't say who. FX gurus ask you to risk three to five percent of your accounts. Think about it. Risking three to five percent of your account. If you risk even five percent, it only takes you twenty trades for you to blow your entire account. If you do not know what you are doing, and three to five percent. It's way too risky. It's even higher than what the bank is giving you per year. Just put that into perspective. So yeah, for me, how I trade, I'm just aiming roughly around one percent a week, and I'm done. Around one percent. How I trade, I risk around. I wait. I get okay. Okay, what am I talking about? How I trade is I usually aim for around one percent a week. So in a month. I'm gaining back four percent in a year. It's like twelve times four, forty-eight percent return in a year, which is already a lot. Just got to think about it. So per week, one percent. Per month is equals to four percent. Just aiming four percent. So it's forty dollars profit on a thousand dollar account. One year, twelve months, you get a forty-eight percent return, which is. Four hundred eighty dollars is, which is already very, very good. That's the reason why I'm sticking to the one percent rule. So I think, uh, have you guys heard about this before? Have you guys thought about this perspective before in trading? I'm sure a lot of people are looking at Instagram. They are looking at this, where they show it. So yeah, that's how I trade. I play it safe. I always remember that I'm already beating the bank. So what for? Am I forcing a trade? 
what for am I forcing a trade? If I'm forcing a trade, I'm just gambling. So yeah, any questions so far? Feel free to let me know in the chats. Any questions or do you have any, you know, currencies that you would like me to take a look at? Take a look at or any questions so far on the trailing stop loss? Any questions? Feel free to let me know. Give me a moment. Okay. Let me drink. I think somebody asked a Q&A. All right, so we have a few currencies. So we have uh, FTN asking for GBP USD, Asga asking for USD JPY, uh, non cool asking for GJ, and Steffi asking for US 30. So we will start with the first person, GBP USD. So GBP USD, I'll remove the parabolic. So just remember, this indicator is the parabolic SA, S A R. Okay, I'll start with the first one first, GBP USD. So maybe let's take a look, just, just to let you guys know, I use something called Smart Money Concepts. So I use Smart Money Concepts for my trading. Have you guys heard about Smart Money Concepts? Do let me know in chat. Raise of hands. Just let me know whether you guys have heard about Smart Money Concepts. Okay, I'll get back to the trailing stop loss first since this is the most important part of, of this webinar. So how do you set the trailing stop loss? So you do not set the trailing stop loss. So yes, please unpack it. Sure. Let me get right, get right into that again. So let's say in this situation, let's say we just put that into perspective. Let's say you have a short, you have a sell stop order. So your sell stop is right here. Sell. So you had a sell position. Sell with your stop loss at the top. So let me get, this is a manual manual okay i will clear this out first this is a manual trailing stop loss so you can see manual trailing stop loss you do not know where to take profit you just let price run 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 so we have one tap two tap three tap four taps we did not have a proper body close yet we do not have a body close above so yeah with the manual tra trailing stop loss once price closes above let me pull this down. Closes above the trend line right here. You can choose to close out your trade. So yeah, uh, we are. So yeah, that is just a very very quick example on the trailing stop loss. Okay, risk to reward. So let's say you close out your trade right here. You pull out. You pull it up. You'll be closing your trade over here. Your risk to reward, you can see it on this two right here. It's under one, two, three is at the top right here. It's called the, let me try to get it out. Where is it? Okay, it's here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven is the long position and the short position too. You can actually find it on trading view. So yeah, you are actually risking, it's like uh, 51 pips, uh, 51 pips. 515 pips for 447 pips. That's a 0 0.87 risk to reward. So yeah, negative risk to reward. Always try to aim for a minimum one to one risk to reward. Okay, if I answered your question, Ria and a uh, non kuruo I hope I, I hope I, <laughs> pronounce your name right. So angelots. So yeah, that is angelots. So that's how you set the trailing stop loss. This is a manual one. Manual one. It's pretty pretty nice. This for people who you know you do not you just want to leave the trade running. You don't you do not know where to take profits yet. 
So this is very, very good. Okay, can, your, can all strategy presented here can also be applied to the crypto markets? Well, I've attempted, I'm not going to lie, I've attempted using the smart money concepts. So I attempted to use the smart money concepts on Bitcoin. I tried to use it on Bitcoin. You know, some of the Forex okay, brokers, some brokers, or okay, I will not say some brokers, okay. So you can actually trade Bitcoin, Ethereum, crypto markets open 24 seven through the weekends. So I actually attempted to try smart money concepts on Bitcoin. But the risk to reward that I noticed this based on my personal backtesting, I'm not sure that if you can, I'm not sure it also applies to you, applies to you guys, but based on my personal backtest, my risk to reward for these smart money concepts is only like one to one, at most one to 1.5. It's not that good. And especially the spread, the spread is not good. Okay, you uh hi Richard. Hey, nice to see you, man. You just joined any trading view indicator for smart money concept. So yeah, if I'm being honest with you, I don't use any indicators for smart money concept. Yeah, so yeah, there is, but I don't think I don't know what is it. So yeah, there might be an indicator. So we have a chalk equal high, equal low, all these kind of things right here. So yeah, maybe you can use it smart money concepts, this indicator right here. So it's called the smart money concepts Lux. Maybe you can use that. So is there an automatic way to put the trailing SL in case you don't have time to watch the price movement? Yes, there is, but I do not have a meta trader right here. So you can search for meta trader for trailing stop loss. You can actually maybe use this. I'll send it into your chats, into the chats right there. So you can actually look it up, trailing stop. 15 points, 20 points, it moves relatively how fast you want to set your stop your, your trailing stop loss too. So if you, if you set 15 points, it will be 15 pips above your entry. 20 points will be 20 pips above your entry and so on and so forth. Okay, uh, non Google, you ask, where can we get more information on SMC? Well, you can actually search more about SMC on can search more about SMC on YouTube. I believe there are many, many uh, YouTubers out there that are providing information on smart money concepts for free. So yeah, I think it's a long past the days of the paid guru, guru, guru mentorships. Many YouTubers provide that information for free. It's good to learn from them. Hey, no problem, Angelo. No problem at all. So yeah, back to it, I was actually testing out smart money concepts. There wasn't, it, the risk to reward isn't that good on cryptocurrencies. And I also do not, I do not scalp, I do not trade cryptocurrencies. Please backtest before you enter, before you start putting your real money in. Please maybe use a demo, backtest it out. Someone asked, can you show us how to take half profits and hold the rest? So you do uh, tell te you, Musa. So you can actually close partial position on Meta Trade Trader. Close partial position. MT4. This is how you can partially close a trade. So I try to stay a partial. Where is it? Okay, I'm not supposed to show another. I won't. I won't be showing another broker's websites. I won't be showing any other websites. I only can show it on MetaTrader. Close a partial position. Okay, well you can see there's a lot right here. There's a lot. There, there's a lot of these links right here. You can search Google. Close partial position on MetaTrader. So yeah, that's how you close a partial running position, taking partial profits. What's the difference between SMC and ICT? Well, ICT, Inner Circle Trader, he is the godfather of smart money concepts. Okay, I should, I should actually credit him, right? ICT, I, smart money concepts, slash Inner Circle Trader. 
So I actually like I I would prefer you guys to actually look up on Inner Circle Trader. He's the godfather of smart money concepts. Smart money concepts is what, what how do you call it? As what he mentioned, many gurus actually condense. They actually condense what he's teaching, what the Inner Circle Trader has been teaching. And then they condense it very simply and then they sell it as a course calling what smart money concepts, charging people money. So yeah, Inner Circle Trader right here is he actually provides all his courses for free. He does not charge a single cent. You can search his name on YouTube. It's free information. It helps you out a lot. And please watch through everything before you start trading. So his series is actually quite long. There are, there are many, many episodes going from 30 minutes to one hour each and it's just teaching you guys how to enter properly so yeah let me check any more questions any more questions okay back to it uh gbp usd what is youtube name oh it's, it's inner circle trader bro you just search this up search this name up on youtube Inner Circle Trader. So yeah, back to it. GBP USD. Let me take a look on the daily. So what I, what I like to do is I like to look at the daily, looking for any liquidity. Any liquidity that can be taken out. Any nearest liquidity. Or fair value gap. So looking at this area, we have a market imbalance. So extended. So we have a pretty, pretty nice market imbalance right here on GBPUSD, which is at this on the daily chart, this at 1.19361, where we can potentially see price head up there. But do take notes if you are if you are looking for a buy right now, it would not be wise because there is another fair value gap located right here. Where price, let's say if you are in a buy. That's my buy position. Let's say if you're in a buy right now, your stop loss below. Stop loss below right here. Price could potentially head back down to clear the daily fair value gap before it continues upwards. So yeah, please do take note of market imbalances. ICT likes to call it the, this is how I trade. I also use this method. So it's called the, write it out, daily fair value value gap so yeah daily fair value gap pretty pretty nice so yeah this is how i trade i take a look at the daily first looking at areas so if i want to play it safe for me i'm a very very safe player just now you guys already know about me safe player so i said you can see here there is a alert so you can set the alert by pressing the plus button at alert for gbp usd so let's say i want to set alert for price to hit the daily fair value gap i just press plus at alerts you should have an orange color line appear so when price taps into the daily fair value gap or whatever area that you guys want it will have a ding ding sound very very loud especially on your phone if you have trading view on your phone it will just notify you on your phone So yeah, I'll just remove it for now. Remove. So that's how I trade. I just wait for price to hit an area of interest. My points of interest, the POI, points of interest, before I look for a potential wrong. Okay, uh, Chandira, could you have the lecture recording? So yeah, uh, it should be recorded on, it should be, it's recorded and it should be uploaded to YouTube. It might take a while for them to upload, maybe a week. So yeah, please hang on, please wait. They should upload it for you. So yeah, how do I enter? Okay, smart money concept, just a very, very brief example how people enter. So let's take a look. Price had a, continue going down. So this applies, this is on the daily. Price goes down, zigzag goes down, zigzag forming a, what is this? This is called a higher low. So price continue. And what, well, what happened? It broke structure. Broke structure. 
where you can have entered a long position, maybe enter here, for a buy to the upside. So this is just a very, very simple, very, very simple, quick run through. I just draw it out. So price goes down, goes down, and what is this? This is called the break of structure. So call it the break of market structure. So text, turn it bigger. Break of market structure, where you can have a long position upon a retracement with your stop loss at the bottom, heading to the upside. This is trading without the use of any indicators, the inner circle trader concepts or smart money concepts. Okay, let me take a look. Uh, Troy, you asked, can you explain to us about the Asia, London, New York zone? Is there any difference or significant in trading in this different zone? So what's the best zone to trade if we live in Southeast Asia? Okay, let me refresh myself, just refresh myself very fast. So ICT actually taught something about the Asian session, the Asian range. So let me take a look at Euro. I usually trade Euro, so I'm, I'm better at Euro, so I take a look. So we have the Asian range. So let's take a quick look right here. The Asian range usually happens. So I'm using the Singapore timing right here, Singapore timing. So Asian range happens from 7 p.m. New York time. Asian range, 7 p.m. to 12 a.m. New York time. So yeah, that's the Asian range. So Asian range that usually is consolidation on what is going to happen during the London session. So I'll draw it out 7 o'clock to midnight. 12. So if you actually take a look how the Asian high and looks high and low affects. So the London session, I'll just write it out. Asian session. Asian session. Asian. I'll just write it Asian. Next, we have the London session. It happens from 2 o'clock. 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. So let me change the color. What is so special about all these ranges? Let me show you what is so special. If you take a closer look, okay, this is on the 30 minutes. Okay, let's move to 15 minutes. Price cleared the, what did it clear? It cleared the Asian high. If you notice right here, it cleared very, very nicely. So I write Asian high cleared. So the Asian high was swept during the London session. And then take a look. It immediately reversed. It had a very, very strong reaction. So if you are looking to take profit, if you are in a buy, please take note always take partials upon clearing the Asian high or Asian low. Then take a look. Price cleared the Asian low right here. We take a look, it's seven o'clock. Okay, seven. What's going on? Let me click seven o'clock to, to 12. Okay, to 12. Just have a confirmation. All right. So price cleared the Asian low right here. Asian low swaps. Okay, I just, I just put that Asian low top, right? So the Asian low was cleared. That's when you can look for a long position back into the range. So yeah, those areas are actually very important. Asian high, Asian low, London high, London low. So yeah, normally the London high is formed around 3.30 p.m., 4 p.m. And usually at 5 p.m., if you look at timing, 5 p.m. is usually the London reversal. So Asian range, I'll just write it out. Asian range. London is from... 2 a.m. to 5 a.m. New York time. So yeah, normally 5, 5 p.m. is the reversal. 5 a.m. New York timing. Take a look. 5 o'clock right here. It reverse back down. So timing is very important too. So please back test. Please draw it out manually. Draw it out manually, please. I know there are indicators for that. But to train your eye, to train yourself, Please put in the effort, drawing it yourself, drawing out manually, marking out the areas, marking out the zones.
So yeah, the especially the uh, New York timing, the New York zone. If you notice New York session, as ICT has mentioned, New York session usually moves in one single direction. So yeah, there are, there are different characteristics for each session. London session, it's usually the sweeping of the Asian high, Asian low. London session, one direction. Asian session is the consolidation of what is going to happen during the London session. So what's the best zone to trade if we live in Southeast Asia? For me personally, I usually look to trade the London session, clearing the Asian low or the Asian high. I usually do not trade the New York session. Daily fair value gap, does it work on fundamentals? Well, daily fair value gap is used for technical analysis and it's not used for fundamentals. So let's say, let's take a look here. Let's say that there was a very, very good news. Let's say, I'll just write it out here. Good news happened. Good news for Euro dollar euro fundamental canon. So good news for Euro dollar fundamental canon. The fair value gap happened right here. So you can combine it. Fair value gap, combine it right here. Adding fundamentals and technical at the same time, you could have a pretty nice trade. So fair value gap can be combined with when it's a good news going in the right way, but if good news and you are looking to short, if you are looking to short, it's not good for you. So always do take note, fundamentals still play a very, very important part in trading. Okay, Nando Vu Brian, this looks like an inverse head and shoulders. Yes, it does. It does. But do take note, man, there are many, many different trading methods. I think for you, you are looking at chart patterns. You are looking at chart patterns using chart patterns, the looking at the head and shoulders, all these kind of patterns, wedges, triangles. Yeah, I used to trade those, I used to use those, so I understand where you're coming from. So yeah, if you want to learn more about all these Asian session range, all this timing, how to use the fair value gap, how to trade without the use of indicators, please check out Inner Circle Trader on YouTube. Okay, so yeah. So yeah, actually, sometimes when I'm free, I also post on TradingView. You can check out my profile here. It's called Dutch Stongs. So people... So yeah, that is me. So that, so that is actually me. I will send it to chat. So that's actually me, Dutch Stongs. I actually post quite... I post whenever I'm free, potential forecast. I'll discuss it. You, can, you guys can ask me any questions. Feel free to follow me. Follow me or... Can choose to follow me or you know just comment on my post well so yeah i had a pretty nice i had a pretty nice uh forecast let me take a look right here so yeah take a look at this forecast which i did on october 27 so yeah sometimes i post you have a play you can see price tapped nicely into the Fair value gap, which I noted out at 1.00863 before it reversed back down. So yeah, sometimes I like to post, I like to like to show you guys potential areas where price might hit to next. So for today, maybe it might, maybe it might not. Okay, it's not updated, not sure why. So yeah. Let me get a cup of water. So yeah, this is just a summary of how I trade without the use of indicators. I used to trade indicators. I used to use MACD. I used to use RSI. I used all kinds of, all kinds of indicators combined just to trade. So that was the past back then. So yeah, so yeah any further questions? Feel free to let me know. Fundamental leading indicators of euro currency. Yeah, well, you can look at the bank. The interest rates. Interest rates affect a lot. CPI, PPI, consumer price index, producer price index. You can take a look at those. Those has very huge volatility in the markets. So please take a, please take notes. You can actually filter out 
none, you can filter out euro. Apply your filter. So for euro news today, for example, only we have it. So the news came out 25 minutes ago. Hmm, it was, well, it was worse than previous, but it was still better than forecast. Ah, yes, yes, I do respect people who still use indicators. Yes, indicators are still relevant trade tools. Different folks, different strokes. Yes, definitely, definitely. Well, I can say for sure, I know a trader in real life. Real life, he's, my, he's a very good friend of mine. He uses indicators to trade like Bollinger Bands. He's very, very profitable. He uses Bollinger Bands for trading. So yeah, I'm not against the use of indicators. If you want to use indicators, please go ahead. Everyone has their own ways of trading. As long as it works for you, it's profitable for you, and you have back-tested it, feel free to use it. Well, so yeah. What indicators do you use, by the way? Do any do, do you use any indicators? Uh, Ok Bonaya? Yeah, it's relevant. Definitely, it's relevant. Many people are using indicators. So he uses the Bollinger Bands for his trading method. Bollinger Bands. So he looks when price goes out of this range and he takes a scalp, he buys and closes a very, very quick scalp just by using Bollinger Bands. Yes, I use EMAs. Hey, nice, nice. It works for you. Just remember to backtest. If you are free during the weekends, please use the chart replay button. So we have the chart replay button right here. You can use it to backtest your trading method. So well, can I talk about FIBO levels, Fibonacci levels? Well, I can't. I'll clear this all out, clear out this indicator. So yeah, Fibonacci levels, if you notice many, many EAs, and many EAs, those robot traders, robot trading, they actually use Fibonacci levels for their trade. So maybe I'll find something clean. Okay, maybe for example, this area. I draw a Fibonacci line to the top. Okay, maybe let's see if there's any areas that have been met. So if you noticed that drawing the price, drawing the Fibonacci levels from top, from bottom to top, notice that these areas act as a form of resistance or even a support. So FIBO levels, many EAs actually use Fibonacci levels and Fibonacci levels are where traders use to take profits or have their stop loss set. So yeah, you can actually use Fibonacci levels for a take profit area. You can see 23.6%. It's as good as it's a, maybe it's a, maybe kind of support. Previously it was a support. So yeah. Bitcoin. So yeah, with the FTX, I'm sure many of you guys have, have uh, FTX caused Bitcoin to drop significantly. So well, somebody did ask me before on Bitcoin. Well, I did tell them that if I'm looking, if I'm looking to buy Bitcoin, I would avoid or refrain from doing so because if for me, for me, I'm using Okay, for 2024 is the Bitcoin halving, so till then, I don't think Bitcoin will have a bullish uptrend. So yeah, on the looking at the monthly, looking at the monthly chart, there is a fair value gap on the monthly located at the $13,200 area. So yeah, it's just a very quick one. That's what I just tell people. Monthly fair value gap to look out for. Just please take note of that. Please take note of that, it's right here. Just a very, very quick one since we are running out of time. So yeah, is there any more questions? I, I wouldn't be analyzing charts anymore since we are running out of time, but if you have any further questions, feel free to drop, drop a message on my trading view. I'll send it one more time. You guys can send me a message. Just, you, you can follow me, send me a message on trading view. Send me your charts. It's best if you send me your chart because I have some followers. They actually told me they buy, they sell gold, but 
they never send me their chart. I don't, I don't really know what they are talking about. So yeah, please, if you have any trade analysis, chart examples, send it in. So the gap is a predicted place for supports or resistance. It's a predicted place for a potential support. Potential support. So you can draw a line. So maybe if we draw a nice line. So yeah, it coincides with this support level right here on the monthly chart. So yeah, there's a support coincides with that area, the fair value gap. So maybe let's draw a Fibonacci. So Fib level, maybe we might have something, maybe we might not have. So maybe we have the 88%. So I draw this one. 88%, zero point. So yeah, there's an 88% Fibonacci level right there. Coincides with where price might potentially retrace back down to. 88% for support, fair value gap. I'm just adding confluence to that area. So yeah, screenshot this if you want. Screenshot, just do take notes. This is on the monthly time frame. So yeah, I will not be answering any more questions since we have run out of time. I would like to thank you guys for joining me today. It really, really, I like to thank you very much for joining today. It's really such a wonderful session. So many good questions. You guys asked me many, many things. I appreciate it. Hey, thank you, Asgar. Thank you, Richard. Hey, thanks, man. Really. Hey, please join for the next Thick Meal webinar. I really want to share my knowledge. I want to share as much as possible, but one hour isn't enough. So yeah, please feel, feel free to just leave a message on TradingView. I'll try my best to answer you whenever I am free. Hey, thank you, Richard. Oh, so oh, so sorry. I cannot. I cannot. Uh, share or I cannot share my YouTube links and all these kind of things right here. I do apologize, uh, Brian. Hey, Kabza, thank you very much. Appreciate. I also appreciate you guys, man. Hey, Troy, thank you. Thank you too. Oh, Boyana, thank you, man. Hey, you too. Keep soaring. Remember, use remember your EMA indicators, please. Remember back test. And continue taking nice profits weekly. Are you churn not Desmond as he's showing? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm churn, I'm churn. Uh, Desmond is actually uh, the chief trader. He's the chief trader for the Everest Fortune Group. He's not here today. So yeah, my, I'm, I'm Chen Yong Sing. Hey, Angela. Hey, thanks a lot. It was helpful. Hey, yes, yes. Hey, thank you very much, guys. Hey, bye, Richard. Bye, everyone. Thank you for joining. Hey, stay safe trading. It's only the Monday. Already done that, it keeps surpassing my expectation. Hey, very, very good. Hey, man, I hope you continue soaring up higher. Hey, good luck on trading. It's only a Monday. Hey, bye, guys. Bye-bye. I'll be taking my leave now. Bye-bye.